you're luscious. What is going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery LR32 here, and welcome to you guessed it, ha <laughs> ha, the toxic deck of the format Mystic Mind Burn. Me and my dad's iteration of it. So smash the living crap out of that subscribe button because Lord knows I am getting my house smashed to bits. <laughs> Not really. It's actually just been a lot of rain. So that we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers as my PC tries to load something up. This is Mystic Mind Burn deck profile. Um, you know, it, it's Mystic Mind. I'm not going to sit here and like try and reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of different ways that you can build Mystic Mind Burn specifically. You know, you can go down the Floodgate route like we saw with YCS Brazil, which came in first place. My dad tried that build actually at the last regional that we went to. He ended up unfortunately going X3 drop. He said that he won all of his game once, but then he just couldn't get the victory in the end, just whether it was back row hate or bad hands. So, he ended up going back to his original build. This is the build that I'm showing off here that we kind of came together and concoct. And by we, I mean, we pretty much just went back to what worked for him. Uh, also, ignore the different colored sleeves. Like, they're all white, but these are a different white. I just have my GOAT format deck built, so I didn't feel like swapping out the sleeves. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up and just dive on into this cancer. So, we're going with the Silent Wobby engine. This is still very, very good. You know, you can just activate Mystic Mind, give it to your opponent. Um, and then their hand size limit becomes three. Still to this day, a lot of people don't realize that the Silent Wobby hits them for their hand size limit. So, you know, you're going against tier element and they, you know, want to try and build a board and whatever, they just leave Wobby on the field and you've got Mystic Mind. It's like, okay, cool. Well, now you're going to lose all the cards in your hand except for three cards. So that may not sound like a big deal, but when you see what else we have in the deck, you're going to see why that's actually really good if your opponent's not paying attention to that. So three Silent Wobby, it's... It's still very good. I really like what it is. Uh, and then we're playing one copy of Planet Pathfinder. We were maxing out on three of these for a while. And um, now we're just down to one with the one terraforming. It works. If for whatever reason you brick, you can go like activate Mystic Mind, set Pathfinder, force the opponent to end on one monster, or for both of you to just, you know, end on one or they pop yours, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so you have a way to work with that there. So I like Pathfinder. It's it's pretty solid. Uh, that's it for your monsters. And then we dive into the real toxicity of the deck. Three Mystic Minds. If you saw my market watch, you see that these things went the fuck up in price. It was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. Uh, three Demise of the Jerk. <laughs> um, so this thing is a when effect, not if. So, you know, if you're playing the Adventure Engine, you bring out a token and play the Faithful Adventure, then I can't Demise it'll land you, which sucks. Card is still broken AF, though, so you should still definitely be playing it. And then we're only playing two copies of Field Barrier. So the issue with Field Barrier is that it's just such a brick, and you don't want to be opening up too many copies with it. However, it's still something that you want to play, especially since you know damn well for a fact that everybody and their mother is going to be preparing for Mystic Mind no matter what matchup it is. So Field Barrier is just an absolute must in this deck. And then we are side decking the third, and the side deck is still a bit in the testing phase, I'll, I'll warn you now. But we are playing two Cauldron in the main, not the full three. I mean, it, it's your win condition. Card's amazing in time, you can gain 500. Um, it's it's your win con, not, not much else to say there. And this is why I said that Silent Wobby is very, very good, because we are playing three copies of Goddess Skull Oracle. So in the event that the opponent is down to three, or even less than three cards in their hand, if you're hitting the top card of their deck every single turn, it's essentially like a negate. You know, think about it. If you're looking at the top three cards of your opponent's deck, arranging them in any order, they're not going to be able to hit their back row removal unless, like, you know, they mill it with, like, tier elements or something, uh, or you can even screw around with tier elements mills and make them not mill as optimally, you know, if, I don't know, if they have, like, a mill two or something, which they never should, but, you know, it can potentially mess with them, especially if they bricked or something, then they can just continue bricking. So you combine this with Silent Wobby, and it's very, very good, especially if the opponent does side deck in back row hate, and you have something like Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell, let's say you negate a Twin Twister, well, then you can put the other Twin Twisters on top of their deck, and then they're still drawing bad for a couple more turns. And then we're playing the card that, honestly, I feel like every deck right now needs to be playing three copies of in the main. Three Dark Ruler. It's very, very hard to go second with this deck. 
Dark Ruler makes it so that no matter what board the opponent builds, you can just Dark Ruler them, activate the Mystic Mind, and then you're off to the races. Because unless they have, you know, a Judgment in their back row or something, then, you know, they're not going to be able to use their monster effects to stop you. And then you sit there and whip out your diddly and proceed to play with yourself, as we used to say on the channel. And then we got one copy of Feather Duster, because back row just really hurts this deck. You know, something like Eldelich, if they've got Conquistadors and Sanguines and all that in the back row, you want to force them to shotgun it. Um, so Feather Duster is just a really good generic back row removal card. We are on one copy of One Day of Peace. Um, <laughs> my dad was actually playing Magical Mallets because he was like, I refuse to be paying like $100 plus per copies of, of uh, Pot of Prosperity. So he was playing like Mallet and Card of Demise, things like that. We end up cutting um, Card of Demise and uh, one copy of Extrav for three copies of uh, prosperity and one day of peace is really really good I understand why some people don't like it because it is a draw so you can't use it with prosperity but the fact that you're just able to lock all damage out for a turn is really really good you don't really care about your opponent drawing so just being able to get that free draw that extra gas and then lock out damage is really good this is supposed to be three I only pulled one out of my megatons but you should be playing three prosperity I understand if you can't afford it but man prosperity is so much better than card of demise or one day of peace. Like the 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 issue is with card of demise is that no matter how many cards you get to draw with, it's one, two, or three. You have to ditch your whole hand at the end of the turn. So if you want to set up like a curse seal play, you fucking can. And that's a really, really big problem with that card. It was never beneficial in testing. Prosperity is just so much better to be able to dig for that one of six. Uh, and then of course we're playing the three duality, and then you only need the two extra with the one copy of terraforming. Then for the traps, we're playing one copy of Metaverse, because it's good. And then we're playing two Curse Seal. It's it's bonkers. And then two co or excuse me, three copies of Dark Rod. And then three copies of Solemn Judgment. See what I mean now by the different types of sleeves. I have my GOAT format deck ready to go. I don't feel like unsleeving my judgments. Um, the 15 card extra deck can be really whatever you want it to be. Whether you want to play 15 Waking the Dragon targets. If you want to play things like Link Karibo Proxy Dragon in case the opponent like gives you a token or something. Because Lost World with Dinos is very difficult. But ain't nobody playing Dinos now in 2022. Dinos are kind of booty booty butt cheeks at the moment. Um, so the side deck, like I said, is still a bit in the testing phase. But it's things that... I would say if you're going to play Mystic Mind Burn, you should at least consider potentially playing. Um, so with that being said, we are playing three copies of Lava Golem. Um, th this card is just disgusting for breaking boards. I feel like, honestly, if there's like nine cards in this side I feel like you should be playing, and Lava Golem is the first three. Um, it, it's, it's a board breaker. What can I say? Tribute two monsters, summon it. You don't care about losing your normal summon. Get rid of two negates or get like a, get rid of two masquerade, the blazing dragons. If you're playing against Despia, they can't burn you. You activate mystic mind and then you're, you're just, you're all set to go. They pop the mystic mind in time. Okay, cool. You just lost a thousand life points, uh, from the lava golem. Um, and then the other set of cards that I think you should be playing in your side, uh, really, the, I feel like that these are the nine mandatory. Three Lightning Storm, which, fun fact, I actually pulled this third Ultra out of my King's Court boxes that I bought for my locals. They only had three boxes left, so I just bought out all three. Uh, and then also three evenly. These nine cards, I feel, no matter what you build your side deck around, you need to play these cards if you're going to play this deck because you have to have all of the power cards in the world to break boards because, damn, it is just difficult to play through established boards. I understand Lightning Storm is not all that great against tier, just because that they can still fuse and do all that. But yet, if going like Dark Ruler and then Lightning Storm, and then even if they're able to rebuild a board and you've got things like Lava to still break it, I don't really feel like it matters at the end of the day. Um, this is also very good against Sprite. You just Dark Ruler and then Lightning Storm pop all the attack modes. It also doubles up as extra back row removal. If you want to have something that chains, and obviously you can dedicate more to Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twisters, things like that. And then Evenly, of course, is just disgusting. And it's even more broken now that a Pointer of the Red Lotus is at one. And on top of that, Red Reboot is banned. Uh, like I said, we're side decking the third copy of Cauldron. And then we've got some other generic back row in here. Like I said, if you want to max out more on Twin Twister or Cosmic Cyclone, you can. Uh, I'm playing these here because I just want all the back row hate that I can get into my side and throw into my main. Because, God, Eldelich is just such a tough matchup with back row. Any 
any floodgates like anti-spell, I'm afraid that people are going to start playing Royal Decree now. It can be very tough to out those things. So having all the back row hate in the world is going to really help you. And then we're playing one copy of D Fisher Macro because it might as well say Tier Element can't play the game. Tier Element is a very tough matchup for Mystic Mind. I think people don't really realize that. You know, if I'm not able to go Mystic Mind, activate Field Barrier, and remember Field Barrier locks both players out of activating any new field spells while Field Barrier is face up. So if I'm not able to get that established and lock you out of your Primeval Planet, you're just going to send something back into your deck and use Primeval Planet to start popping my cards. So I start locking you out of your mills. I mean, how are you going to beat me? You can't use Galaxy Cyclone from your grave if this is up because it's just going to be banished. What other back row hate are you playing? And do I have a negate for it? If I do, well, it's, it's just GG No Re. And then we're also playing the third copy of Curse Seal. This can be hot swapped with like Dark Bribe, like especially going against Sky Striker. Sky Striker is another tough matchup, especially if you get like my Book of Raton regional opponent who was 3 0 with Sky Strikers and started stalling me in a time. Yeah, go ahead and go watch our uh, worst regional ever sprite deck profile video about that because I ain't letting that shit go. <laughs> <laughs> he stalled us into fucking time and tried to say, well, there's 30 seconds left on the clock. They just call time. Lord have mercy. You know it's bad when even the judge has to comment on my video and let me know that the dude was just being a dick. <laughs> so, guys, that's my deck profile. It's it's Mystic Mind Burn for October 2022. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are, are you ready to be toxic? Are you ready to be hard? Unlike our Ultra Ball that is soft. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't worry, I'm, I'm fine from the hurricane. I'm all battered down and all set to go. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.